So free fatty acid intake forced into triglyceride synthesis to store the fat. That's happening in a, as a result of elevated insulin. And just the pulling in of the glucose in the liver saying, hey, I already got a lot of glycogen on hand, so I'm just going to start converting this excess glucose into fat. And that's happening again roughly at half the rate or half the contribution that the free fatty acids are contributing. But even still, it all comes down to insulin resistance. Now, despite what I just said, let's talk about a couple signals that are a little independent of the insulin signal, even though insulin is still relevant. Um, but these can operate somewhat independently. They have the ability to play by their own rules, and that is fructose and then alcohol. And again, alcohol does fit, as I said, within this metabolic definition because it is a function of metabolism that leads to the liver getting fatter. It's just a unique one. So just as another brief sort of history lesson that I perhaps could have started with, uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease was a phenomenon generally of the mid-20th century where, or maybe a little earlier, where um, we found that in the past, if someone had fatty liver disease, it was almost only because of their consumption of alcohol. And then there arose in the you know early-ish, mid-1900s, people manifesting with fatty liver disease and yet very little to no alcohol consumption. And that, of course, coincides very, very well with the consumption of fructose. So fructose is unique um, because unlike other sugars, specifically glucose, any cell can metabolize glucose. In fact, in fact, literally every cell of the body is capable of metabolizing glucose, but that is not the case with fructose. Fructose is almost entirely metabolized in the liver, thereby placing a unique metabolic burden on that organ. And the liver converts fructose directly into fat via de novo lipogenesis, leading to fat accumulation. And fructose metabolism in the liver generates metabolites that also, to even compound the problem, can trigger inflammation, and that's specifically uric acid. So one of the great tragedies of the modern view of gout, which is a problem of uric acid accumulation, is that we always focus on the meat. And while meat may contribute somewhat in some people, um, it is nothing compared to fructose. Every one molecule of fructose that a cell the liver especially, metabolizes, will give rise to a molecule of uric acid. So that's an enormous contributor. Now, some people want to argue that fructose is not a contributor to fatty liver disease in humans. While there is substantial evidence in rodents, some claim that humans don't metabolize fructose the same way. That's not wrong. We do. We do metabolize fructose somewhat differently than, say, mice and rats. But even still, to then take that claim one step further and say there's no human evidence is simply not true. And so just to directly address that, I wanted to highlight a few studies. So Lee et al. in 2009 published a report in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that looked at fructose overconsumption in people and then measured the degree to which um, the liver started making fat from it. And the, stummy, the study demonstrated that the high um, fructose diet after just one week, just, just seven days, um, led to significant elevations in the liver. So directly um, highlighting this direct effect. Another um, controlled feeding study by Schwartz et al. in 2015, it was published in the Journal of Clinical Investigation, which, which is a particularly high profile journal. And the participants consumed beverages that were sweetened with glucose or fructose or high fructose corn syrup, which is almost, it's a slightly, it's like 55% um, fructose, 45% glucose, although that can vary. There are different versions of high fructose corn syrup. And the study found that the beverages containing fructose led to increased liver fat and de novo lipogenesis compared to the glucose sweetened beverages. And then a final study um, is Stanhope et al. in 2009 published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism, JCEM, another good journal within my field, and that investigated the results of consuming fructose-sweetened beverages for 10 weeks, once again, finding that it resulted in a significant increase in de novo lipogenesis, so within the liver. So another direct effect. So there, that's just a few of the several human studies that have looked at this.